All right, hey, this is Chris, uh, Beer Town Austin. Uh, welcome to another episode of Over Pint. I'm here with Brian Peters, brewer of Uncle Billy's. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. So, mine's not officially a pint, but uh, yeah, it's I a, think we're in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in clue. I'm, I'm over the pint. Yeah. <laughs> so, what are we drinking? This is the Axe Handle Pale Ale. Okay. It's one of the beers that's always on tap here, and it's. Um, it's your classic American West Coast style pale ale, uh-huh. kind of ramped up a little bit. A lot of generous uh, hopping with Simcoe hops. Uh, I dry hop it with Simcoe also, and, and that's a new variety. I think in the past maybe ten years, man, not that, not even that long, maybe six or seven years that mm-hmm. hop's been around. It's uh, a little different than Cascade, which is the classic, you know, yeah, yeah. West Coast hop. It, this one has a little more of a peachy and apricot flavor. Uh, maybe even a pineapple. I, I get a little pineapple juice finish on it a lot of yeah, times. Yeah. And uh, actually started using the Simcoe because uh, during the hop crisis I couldn't actually get Cascade. And so the recipe was changed and I was thinking about changing the name but I didn't and I'm glad I didn't. And I, when the Cascade came back I didn't change the recipe because it was so popular. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's a good one. yeah, it turns out uh, it's slowly been selling more and more, and now it's our biggest seller, and yeah. I think uh, we've got kind of a following for pale ale here. Yeah, it's a good pale ale. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's, you know, a little bit hoppier than, you know, I would, you know, you would think as far as regular pale ale goes, but, you know, I like that. I think yeah, you know, other people do too. if nothing else on a pale ale, I'm going to probably fudge a little higher, just uh-huh. to, if I'm going to be, if I'm going to have one that's... Out of style, it's going to be more of the aggressively hopped out of style. Right, right. And a lot of times we suggest it, yeah, to people who, if we don't have the IPA on, then we'll say, have you had our pale ale? Yeah. And if, sometimes they roll their eyes, but then I get them to try it, and they're they're usually satisfied enough. Yeah, that's and, how it was for me. I came in and was looking for an IPA, and we suggested this, and I liked it. Yeah, there's, uh, you can go to many brew pubs, and their IPA isn't this hoppy. Right. So... It, it, it's just one of those things. Once you build a reputation for making pale ale like that, it's real similar to what we brewed at the bitter end, and it's just it's a hop. It's it's kind of more on the aggressive, but sometimes you don't have to always be to style. Yeah, yeah. And I've had people tell me it's not to style, and you know, hey, what what does that mean? Is it delicious or not? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not to style. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a. <laughs> But we dry hop it after about a week and let it sit for another week. And I think that helps a lot with the aroma. Yeah. I think you got to almost dry hop all pale ales. So, you know, maybe not an English style, but I believe you should be dry hopping any American pale ale. Yeah. Yeah, dry hopping. Right. Chunk the hops in, for sure. <laughs> Don't be shy. Anybody who's at home and has never dry hopped, please try it. You'll love it. So what are these guys here? These are the two uh, rotating taps uh, beers that I have on. One is a double IPA called the Resonator. And it is what you call just dank with hops. It's uh, the resins, uh, the hop resins are just thick. Um, It's all Amarillo and Cascade with uh, some Columbus. But I'd say 90% of the hops in this beer are Amarillo and Cascade. They're uh, a lot of whole hops, which give it a whole different like dimension and aroma. Uh, the gravity, uh, the strength is about eight and a half, so it's not one just to be taken lightly, but it's one of those things that you'll find yourself with the bitterness up at about 90 IBUs, it dry, it finishes and dries out, and uh, you'll find yourself finishing that pint a little faster than you thought. Yeah, yeah. But, try it? Yeah, help yourself. Yeah, yeah. You keep talking about it. So yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, that one was, um, making that beer is a little more difficult because I use my louder ton as a hop back. And a hop back is basically a device for holding whole hops while you run the finished wort across it. Okay. Uh, Sierra Nevada uses hop back. Um, anyway, I don't have one, so I use I clean my louder ton as clean as I can get it, which is a device with a screen in it, mm-hmm. and I put in the whole hops, and then everything out of the kettle goes across those hops and then into the fermenter. Oh, nice. And that's how you get like a little extra, a little different aroma. Um, and a little more, just a little more uh, different dimension on hops. Okay. And what is this guy here? The... This is a new beer. It's called Control Alt Delete. For all you people who love uh, Windows so much <laughs> and have had to reboot, uh, it's an alt beer, which is a German style ale. Uh, alt means old in German, and uh, this is a tr- beer that's only really brewed in Dusseldorf. 
other than brew pubs who get crazy like me and decide to brew one. They're typically uh, amberish to like this is a, like a garnet color or ru dark ruby. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of Munich malt, a lot of German malt, and then all German hops. It's about 40% Munich malt and 30% uh, Vienna. A little bit of crystal and a little bit of dark uh, roasted malt, and then all German uh, Hallertau and Tetnang hops. Get it pretty bitter. Uh, and some, I put in some finishing hops too, which isn't traditional, which I found out later, because I do all my beer research after I brew it. That's where the elite part comes from. Yeah, so I, I tend to... My try? Yeah, help yourself. I tend to jump in on a style later. It's not so supposed like to... a cracker. Yeah, it's not supposed to be... Yeah, Munich Malt will do that. Yeah. And then the 40 IBUs gives it a little bit of a nice, firm finish. But that roasty character, a little bit stronger than I would like. But also, yeah. at 5%, it's not meant to be something that it's like substantial beer it's supposed to be a drinkable beer in Dusseldorf they sell them in like 10 ounce glasses and you yeah, just yeah. they just tick off how many you drink and so it's kind of like a session their session amber it's supposed to be smoother than an ale traditional ale yeah. less fruity so all of that makes it like their faux, uh, faux lager because they do lager them for a little while and so it gets some cold time it's good I like it thank you yeah um like it's being in Texas, you know, you don't, you're not really exposed to a whole lot of alts, but um, the few I've exactly. had... Exactly. Like, I'm basing it on um, very limited knowledge of alt yeah. beer. I've never so, been to Dusseldorf. So, uh, real quick, let's talk a little bit about, um, I guess, what your, I guess, like, brewing philosophy here at Uncle Village. You've got, you know, some staple beers, and then you experiment with some rotating. Like, how do you, how does that work out? Yeah, they, they, we keep six beers on. I try to rotate two and sometimes three. Okay. Uh, I would prefer three, but sometimes it's a little challenging. So uh, there's a wheat and a blonde. They don't change. The amber and the pale never changes. Yeah, yeah. So it leaves me with two taps, and I typically rotate either uh, the hoppy beer, which can be uh, a beer called Hop Zombie, which is, which is a good. classic oh, okay. IPA, Amer West Coast IPA. Uh, I'm making Wood Eye Rye next, which is a rye IPA. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be either an IPA or something like a double IPA. It can be the Helen Keller Pills, which is a hoppy pilsner. It is won some medals. And which is won yeah. a couple medals at the GABF. Yeah, so hey, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, I'll let me yeah. try some of this all. <laughs> um, so yeah, I get to play around with those taps. That's where I get free reign. And yeah, so yeah. when I make, I like to make smoke beer here because yeah, yeah. I have smokers and I'm actually excited about that as basically something I'm, I'm trying to extend uh, and, and experiment with. And so the, the, the smoke beers go on the dark tap usually, which is kind of limiting. I'd like to make some smoked lagers. Yeah, you guys uh, did one uh, a couple months ago. Smoke, I did, I, the only lager I do right now that's smoked is a smoke, thick black smoke, right, right. which is a Schwarz beer, smoked Schwarz beer. But I'd like to do a traditional Bomberg style rock beer, which is kind of a Vienna Oktoberfest smoked beer. And I'm not sure, I guess I could put that on the hop t or on the multi tap. Yeah, yeah. But it, anyway. So I guess, um, real quick, tell me kind of what's coming up in the future, anything interesting beer wise? Well, I, I brewed the pills. For? The pills will be out. I have entered it in the World Beer Cup for the first time. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm getting to the point where. The World Beer Cup is uh, only once every two years, and uh, you know now that the GBF, I've won a couple medals at the GBF. I'm looking to see how the beer stacks up against the rest of the basically the, any beers in the in the world. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be in the Keller beer category again with okay. the, with the pills, and we'll see how it turns out versus some of the Germans, I'm sure. Yeah. And it'll be, uh, but that's in uh, that that's in April. We'll find out about that. Um, you guys have a parking lot opening soon, right? We have our parking coming back. Please come, come back, come and, and enjoy. We're gonna have a huge parking party. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, bands in the parking lot, the whole thing. Um, yeah, so we lost our parking. Uh, it's coming back, and I think uh, we'll go from selling, you know, a lot of pale ale to just a uh, crap load, just a huge crap load. Crap load. <laughs> it's Official actual, measurement. It's a brewer's measurement. <laughs> yeah. If you want to actually know it in barrels, I'd have to get a calculator, <laughs> <laughs> convert it. All right. Well, Brian, thanks a lot. It's been fun. Um, thanks for having us out. Yeah, cheers. cheers. And for good beer. Yeah, thank you. Come and park. Yeah. <laughs>